lot has changed in myeloma in the recent uh, past, especially in the past decade. And this has touched all aspects of the disease, including the diagnosis and the treatment. Now, more recently, the diagnostic criteria for myeloma was updated to incorporate some of those patients with very high risk uh, small tree myeloma uh, who previously were observed. So that was a paradigm change in the disease because now we are willing to treat patients who have not yet developed symptoms but has a very high likelihood of developing complications. So we, we want to try and avoid that. Now this again reflects a better understanding of the biology and the ability to predict who is actually going to develop myeloma in the short uh, duration of follow-up. Now, we have also uh, we have significant um, advances in terms of the particular therapies we use. So we have several new classes of drugs that have become available within the past few years, most exciting of them being the monoclonal antibodies, which were approved uh, only um, within the past year. Now, the new classes of drugs that have become available have in turn allowed us to create combinations that are highly effective. And this results in responses which are deeper than what we have previously seen with the previous uh, medications as well as the stem cell transplant. So now we have new drugs, new combinations which can be used in conjunction with transplant where applicable to give very deep responses. And not only that, we also have data supporting prolonged use of some of these therapies to try and keep the disease under control for long periods of time. Now, because of these deeper responses, we also have had to update the response criteria, which was done about a year ago, where we introduced a minimal residual disease testing um, as part of the response criteria. Now, minimal residual disease negativity was not something that we had typically thought about in myeloma for at least until recently. Now, with the new therapies, now we are able to attain an MRD negative status in a substantial number of patients, even in patients who have relapsed myeloma. Now this we believe would be the first step towards actually curing this disease in a proportion of patients. Now obviously we need to do more studies and in order to further answer is it a particular combination that could help us do that? Is it the duration of treatment that would help us do that? Or is it early intervention in patients with small ring myeloma that will actually help us cure the disease? So all the new drugs that we have in myeloma is clearly a great advance, but it also poses a significant challenge for uh, people who take care of uh, myeloma. Now, the vast majority of the uh, oncologist who takes care of uh, myeloma patients don't necessarily take care of a large number of these patients. So it is particularly challenging for them when you have so many different new drugs that have come to the market, and particularly the combinations that have been developed based on these new classes of drugs. So the challenge that um, that the oncologists face today is how do we select a particular therapy for a particular patient? Now clearly we have made some progress in terms of identifying how a particular class of drug may be beneficial for uh, a group of patients. Uh, particularly in terms of the high risk patients, we know that uh, proteasome inhibitors can have a critical role to play in those group of patients. So combinations based on um, uh, proteasome inhibitors are particularly important for those group of patients. Now, we also know that the older patients don't do as well. So we also have incorporated into guidelines how to adapt the therapy for older patients. Similarly, patients who present with particular types of um, uh, complications, for example, renal insufficiency. We know those patients may need some change in the treatment, incorporating certain agents uh, while not using others to get the maximum benefit um, in terms of not only just controlling the myeloma, but also maximizing the chance of reversing some of those renal failure type of complications. Now, I think the important thing for the practitioners is to use some of the guidelines that are being developed, especially the International Myeloma Working Group have come out with guidelines that are targeted towards adapting the therapy for certain groups of patients based on their um, presenting characteristics. But equally important is to get a better sense of what are the types of toxicities these drugs have. Now, some of the toxicities are fairly similar with all the cancer agents, you know, drop in the blood counts or reactions to monoclonal antibodies, which most people are familiar with and it's easy for them to manage those. But these drugs can also have some specific toxicities, for example, peripheral neuropathy with bortezomib. 
which needs a different approach and it's important for pa um, the practitioners to be aware of how to modify the doses or how to react to particular uh, toxicities that you may see from these drugs. One of the key aspects of um, uh, taking care of myeloma patients is the team approach. Obviously not every myeloma patient can come to a large uh, tertiary referral center to take care, have their myeloma taken care of. So I think it's very important for um, the academic um, centers and the, the myeloma specialists in academic centers to collaborate with primary hematologists and oncologists who practice in the community so that patients can get the best care in the community that they live in. And there are different ways of doing that. I think it's important for most of these patients with myeloma to be at least seen by a specialist in the, in the beginning so that you can chart out a plan of treatment. Uh, it's important for them to be seen in a larger center for consideration of stem cell transplant if they are eligible for that. And it's also important to maintain that relationship you know, on, on an ongoing basis, maybe having them see the specialist at least once a year so that when they come to a problem, they can get the help of the uh, specialist and later on in the course of the disease, when they have become uh, refractory to some of the commonly available drugs, they also have access to clinical trials. So I think it's very important to maintain that team approach right from the beginning, from the time of diagnosis, all through the journey of um, dealing with myeloma.